Have you ever been in a lab, whether it be for school or for research, and you've been asked to use the technique called flow cytometry, but you don't know exactly where to start? We will be going over the basics so you will go into your next lab confidently. The first flow cytometry device was originally developed in Germany at the University of Munster, where scientists then patented their new technique and commercialized it in 1968 with a German company named Partec. The technology was created to analyze thousands upon thousands of particles every second, where it was developed to be a similar to a microscope. Although a flow cytometer can quantify large numbers of specific cells utilizing lasers, flow cytometry is currently utilized in application to aid scientists with sorting cells based on their complexity and size, analyzing cell cycle uh, status, determining cell viability, sorting cells based on fluorescence, and many more. The current traditional commercialized flow cytometer has around 4 lasers and 14 fluorescent detectors. Next, we will be discussing the application of flow cytometry and the specifics surrounding the traditional flow cytometry procedures. There are three systems to keep in mind, fluidics, optics, and electronics. Firstly, there's a fluidic system that allows for the flow of cells in a single file line through a flow chamber. Secondly, there's an optical detection system. Lasers are used to strike the sample at what is known as the interrogation point, which causes scattering of the laser light. Various mirrors and filters direct and guide the light towards detectors. Signals are then amplified and converted towards the final component, which involves computer systems analyzing the data and generating the output results. We will now be going more in depth regarding the specifics of these three components. Within the fluid component, flow cytometry uses a concept called hydrodynamic focusing, which involves the use of a sheath fluid made of a buffered saline solution. In the flow chamber, sheath fluid surrounds the sample containing the cells and moves at a fast rate. This causes the sample to be forced into the conical end of the chamber, causing cells to form a single file line traveling at a constant speed. Additionally, the pressure and speed of the sheath can be controlled manually. Within the second component, or the optical system, the focusing of the sample of cells in a single file streamline leads into the second part of the technique in which a laser will strike each cell at the interrogation point. As the light strikes, light scattering occurs in two main ways, forward scatter and side scatter. In forward scatter, the larger the size of the cell, the greater the forward scatter, meaning the angle is greater as the light reaches the detector. Forward scatter is great for looking at the size of the cell. There is a detector for forward scatter and multiple detectors for side scatter. Much larger angles that scatter all around the cell are classified as side scatter, which reflects the internal complexity or the granulation of cells, meaning that side scatter is great for looking at the complexity of cells. Organelles and other structures inside the cell obstruct the laser light, sending it into different directions. This means that cells with greater cellular complexity will cause greater side scatter. Various mirrors and filters are used to direct and guide the light from side scatter towards the detectors. In the case of sorting cells based on fluorescence, cell samples can be stained with fluorescently conjugated antibodies specific to biomarkers found on certain cells. The laser will exclusively excite the fluorescently labeled cells and produce a signal at the detectors. The detectors have now received the signals from all the scattering of the laser light. To analyze this data using the third and final component, being the electronic system, the signal exits the detector as a current pulse. It then is ran through various amplifiers and converters that allow it to be converted into a digital signal. Individually, forward and side scatter cannot be fully analyzed to draw any conclusions. However, when combined, they form scatter plots that show distinct populations of cells with specific scattering patterns, which allows for identification of different types of cells within a heterogeneous sample. In the case fluorescent labels are used to sort cells, the fluorescent emission is analyzed by the computer and can be further sorted mechanically. After going over the three main components of flow cytometry, we will now be discussing the importance of the technique. Overall, the technique of flow cytometry is important within many fields, where its application quickly became popular within interdisciplinary fields such as molecular biology, bacteriology, virology, infectious disease monitoring, immunology, oncology, and many more specific areas of research. 
For example, a real application of the technique would be that of a heterogeneous cell sample being peripheral blood that can be analyzed using flow cytometry. Side and forward scatter plots obtained would show distinct populations of cells with unique characteristics. In this example, three blood cell populations are represented in the scatter plot. The one in red with high side scatter, meaning high cell complexity, which is indicative of granulocytes, whilst the other two are indicative of blood cell type monocytes and lymphocytes. To summarize, flow cytometry is great at quickly analyzing specified tissues, cells, and or particles as they pass through a multitude of lasers and detectors, where the three main components comprise of fluidics, optics, and electronics. Scientists have been using the application of flow cytometry in many different interdisciplinary fields to help with diagnoses, disease monitoring, and other research advancements. Flow cytometry has come a long way since the initial commercialization, where there are hopes for the application of flow cytometry in research to continue to expand exponentially.